Hello, I'm Slotty Bartfast, and I told you my name was not important, of the modern cracking and game development group, Pros, and welcome to the C64 Code Hacking Tutorials. In this episode, due to popular demand that led me to, le to deleting and redoing all of my original videos, I'll be doing an easy to follow video screencast and giving you the lowdown on Commodore 64 machine language programming or assembly coding as it is known in the C64 scene. Before I start, I'd like you to know that this episode was inspired by the legendary cruiser of Camelot and his excellent C64 assembler tutorial, which you can find a direct link to in the video description below. This tutorial is intended for people who know what a Commodore 64 is and have had some knowledge of how it works, such as playing games and loading demos on it. These people are often known as noobs in the C64 scene. Don't feel bad if you are one. We've all been a noob at one time or another. Do be aware though that people will bust your balls in the scene, especially on Commodore scene drama base. Don't worry about that. Compulsive Further Reading is the official Commodore Programmer's Reference Guide and Compute Magazine's excellent book, Mapping the C64. You'll find links to online copies of these books in the description, as well as the link to the invaluable Bombjack's Commodore Archive, where you can find literally hundreds of Commodore 64 magazines and books. So what is machine language? Essentially, it is a native language of any computer. Even in these days of high-level languages such as C++ and Visual Basic, the computer itself still thinks in machine language. In the case of C64, it's 6510 machine language. It's basically the same as 6502, but was Commodore's own take on the chip. It features illegal opcodes, which were common in early 6502 chips, but I won't go into that now. These were later removed in future iterations of the 6502 chip by the, VDC, the WDC Corporation. But how do you write code in machine language? Either with an ML monitor on an, an assembler on a real C64 or by using a cross assembler on a modern computer. For this tutorial, we'll be using the Action Replay cartridge image in Windvice and doing some simple live coding inside of an actual com emulated Commodore 64. Won't that be exciting? In the next episode, I'll show you how to easily set up a cross development environment based on the C64 Studio, a complete cross development environment. Not real on 64 IDE, TAS64, CarPad, and SpryPad, as I've used on my blog and as I've said in a previous and now deleted video. Richard Bayless of the New Dimension switched me onto this program last night and I thank him for it, and you will too once you use this wonderful IDE. But for now, we'll focus on the MO monitor and learning just how to understand 6.10 machine language. There will be stuff happening on the screen in a moment, don't worry. Machine language is written with opcodes, such as these. And you'll see my 1.1x2 scroller source code. You can get access to this source code and five other routines on the Patreon project right now for only $5 a month. Full commented source code and support. That's the only way to do it, in my opinion. Machine language is written with these opcodes. These are simple commands written in three letter abbreviations, like this, and there are a very limited number of them. But with these few simple commands, almost anything becomes possible. Now, in my opinion, the best way to learn to code ASM is to, is to use the MO monitor of the action replay cartridge. Not only does it allow you to assemble code on the fly, it lets you freeze any program and examine and even alter its programming. This is how it learns code, freezing the latest demos and games and reverse engineering their code. Before I got my own copy of the programmer's reference guide, I was coding in the dark, making my own programs before I even knew what those three letter opcodes actually meant. For the next part of the tutorial, you'll have to download the vice package that I've supplied in the links on Dropbox. It contains a vice configured with the standard settings, and also a, a, a sorry, and also a folder of Action Replay cartridge images, not just the Action Replay Six. Both are linked in the description below. Now pause this video, download that, and then come back and follow along with the tutorial. 
Now open your BIOS folder, and then double click on X64 to start the Commodore 64 emulation. Now in BIOS select File, Attach Cartridge Image, Action Replay Image. Go into Action Replay Download folder, and select Action Replay version 6. It will go straight into its menu. Press F3 for normal reset into standard Commodore 64 mode. You can also press F7 here to install the fast loader and have the ability to load programs much faster. Now we'll code the first lines almost any Commodore 64 program has ever typed in assembly. Make the border of the screen flash a lot of colored lines by incrementing the border color register. While in BIOS, press Alt Z and the action replay cartridge will activate. Whoops. Now press M to get into the action replay in my monitor. Now type A2000 ink dollar sign that's important I'll explain it soon DO20 and press enter. The assembler will assemble at the next available memory slot. Then type JMP dollar sign 2000 and press enter and press enter to get back out of assembly mode. Now type G2000 and see the results of your very first C64 ASM code. Isn't it pretty? Yeah. A2000 means to assemble code at address 2000. Inc or increment DO20 means to increment the border color register. And finally jump 2000 means to jump back to address 2000, effectively forming a loop. When you've had your fun, wee Press one stop and restore, or escape and page up in vice. Now, consider the fact that you now know how to freeze a program and assemble code with the MR monitor. You could now, for instance, freeze demos and games and examine their source code to see how they work. To disassemble in mem code in memory in the MR monitor, simply type D and the address you wish to view. So to view the code we just made, you would type D2000, and the first line of code will be displayed. Type D and hit, hit enter again, and the program will list. Then press escape to stop the listing. Here you see the code we just assembled, disassembled for ease of reading. But what are these strange numbers? Well, they're hexadecimal, or base 16 numbers, used by machine language due to their ease of translation to binary. So our program resides at 2000, which is 8192 in decimal. If you type SYS 8192 into the emulator now, your program will execute again. Isn't that cool? Don't worry about having to interpret these numbers all the time whilst coding, however, as you can just utilize hexadecimal decimal binary calculator. Just use the one linked in the description for ease of use. Now, it take far too long me to describe what every opcode means in this tutorial, but I'll do something even better for you. If you don't mind the little light reading, you'll find a link in the description to the excellent All About Your 64 by Ninja of the Dreams. This is an essential resource for coders, as it not only explains the full 6510 instruction set, including legal opcodes and how many cycles they use up, but it also explains all the registers for the VIC, SID and CI chips. Well that brings us to the end of this very first second release of the C64 coding hacking tutorial. Thanks for bearing with me and my cheap microphone and my first static screen videos that was so hard for somebody to follow. Forgive me, I come from the blogging world and it won't happen again. I'd actually planned to launch this series in early January, but AJ Heller from Scene World got so enthusiastic and mentioned my Patreon project in this week's Scene World podcast, so I had to get things running quick smart or miss out on an awesome opportunity of being featured in Scene World. I hope you'll agree that even though this was rushed, whoops, even though this was rushed, uh, 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 it has been worth it all. If you like this tutorial and would like to watch more screencasts in the future, consider pledging just five dollars a month to my Pledgeling Patreon project to support my endeavours. It's still early days for me, and every dollar counts towards me being able to do these tutorials full time, and even teach you to code games within a few months. There's no obligation, so you can stop your pledge after only one month if you so please. 
and it's only price of two copies with full commented source code and an invite only, only IC support, cha support channel for 24 7 assistance from my friends and I on Freenode, and we'll even be having the occasional Google Hangout. Thanks for listening to this first, second release of the C64 coding hacking tutorial, and stay tuned for more to come in the coming days. In the meantime, if you would like some intermediate level reading, check out the C64 code hacking blog. There's already plenty of cool routines, and the source code is free. So for now, it's goodbye for me, and hello to code. Good night, and good morning. Oh, thank God that's fixed and done. Woo!